we had an oncology grand round and in an oncology grand round we had an amazing discussion on triple negative breast cancer what is oncology grand round and why do I, did I start the oncology grand round oncology grand round started um motivated as part of nonprofit work that I'm doing but I wanted to be more academic I wanted to be able to share the oncology knowledge that I've learned in my days of oncology in South Africa. I wanted to share the cases of the patients that I've seen. I also wanted to share the research with my colleagues and my colleagues can share it with me. I wanted that secular communication motion that should not stop. So the best thing was to start and oncology grand round and we host these oncology grand rounds every Tuesdays no every Wednesday I'm sorry every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. we meet on Clubhouse we are planning now to go live streaming on YouTube and we've started this page on Facebook so that you can be part of this amazing discussion please follow all our tweets as oncology grand rounds and you will find that these tweets will help if you cannot find them follow cancer dr3 that's c-a-n-c-e-r d-r-3 r d for dr for doctor three and follow cancer dr3 we are sharing all the tweets of the doctors that are speaking today we had um discussion on triple negative uh, breast cancer and the guests that were with me was Dr. Wajahadi and also Dr. Sarah Jot, which is Sabi. He says we must call him Sabi. Dr. Wajahat Ahmed is a radiation oncologist based in India. He made a request through Oncology Grand Rounds last week and he said he would like to present breast cancer patient. And I said, please feel free. Can you find us a triple negative breast cancer patient that we can discuss? And he said, I'm all in. And he discussed with us a 39 year old female who presented to him with a bilateral triple negative breast cancer. What does this mean? The woman had breast cancer on both her breasts. Then what happened? What's the cause? So what happened was this patient presented late. So one left breast was T4A, which is an advanced stage breast cancer. And one left breast was T4B without mats. So the staging was T4B and not M not. Okay, so there was no metastasis and there was no lymph node involvement. This is how we stage the tumor or the cancer. We stage it according to the size. The tumor size will tell us whether it's a T1, T2, T3. In case of breast cancer, we use two centimeter below 20 centimeter, two centimeter above two centimeter and more. There are guidelines called NCCN guidelines. Please check them. There's NCCN guidelines for patients too. They will help you understand how staging is done. So back to the patient that we discussed today. Dr. Wajahat is man man managing this patient. And then my question was to him, what was the family history? He said the patient's family history was nil so there was no family history for breast cancer or any other cancer the patient was not born of parents with cancer and did not have relatives and first degree relative which is sister brother mother and they did not have cancer so then my next question was did the patient smoke he said the patient never smoked okay those are the sum of the predisposing factors of breast cancer then the next question was, did she use contraception? And the answer was no, he never used contraception. So Trudy, who was in this talk and moderating so well for us, because we need moderators for these rooms. They can be very hectic and busy that we need put, to put people on stage and take them off stage. It's quite a lot. And Trudy, thank you so much for coming to all our events and help us with moderation. So. When uh, Trudy, who was moderating, said, 
This is what's so special about this case that the patient that Dr. Wajahadi Ahmed presented. It's so special because she learned that anybody can get cancer, even if you don't have a family history, even if you don't know anything about your family, even if you never smoke, you never drank, you never, like this lady, she presented with bilateral, which means both sides, breast cancer, which was the aggressive type, which was triple negative. What does it mean? PR, which is progesterone negative, ER, which is estrogen negative, and also HER2 negative. That's why we call it tri triple negative. What is this? These are hormonal, these are receptors that the hormones can attach on and help the cancer grow. So the treatment is to block these receptor uh, by giving hormonal therapy or giving uh, the and biologicals to be able to block these receptors so that the cancer will not grow. So we'll talk more about these receptors and we'll talk about more, what are biologicals? What do we use them for? But back to the patient. So this patient was then treated aggressively, which is very admirable of Dr. Ahmed, to decide to treat this patient aggressively. What does it mean? They did not plan on treating the patient. They treated the patient radical. They wanted to treat the patient, not palliative, but radical. What does, pa what does palliative mean? What does radical mean? Palliative means you treat with an intent to reduce the symptoms. You cannot be able to cure the cancer. But when we treat radical, the intention is to aggressively treat the cancer itself. So palliative is symptoms and, and radical is treatment of cancer itself. So they decided even though the cancer was advanced, they were going to be able to give the patient aggressive treatment, which is amazing. It's beyond the word amazing because now this patient had a chance. And why did he do that? He said he did that because the patient was young and they wanted to save his li her life. She had four children already, so there was no need for preservation of um, ovaries or anything. But what happened was she got neoadjuvant chemotherapy. What is neoadjuvant? Neoadjuvant is chemotherapy before surgery. Why do we do this? It's because if you give a chemotherapy, if you're presenting a patient with large, so the intent is to get clear margins when you're going to operate. What are clear margins? The areas without the tumor. So when the tumor is this big, you want to be able to cut and have a clean tissue around it. There's the clear margins. So to get clear margins, you have to reduce the, the tumor to smaller size and they wanted doing that. So what chemotherapy did they give? They gave AC and Texotere, four cycles of AC and four cycles of Texotere. So they gave this chemotherapy uh, to a patient for four cycles. So it means this patient received chemo first and then they did um, um, uh, investigation and checked and found that the tumor size had reduced. So then the patient was able to be started on a surgery, which was total mastectomy, bilateral. Remember, she has bilateral triple negative. She has bilateral carcinoma and she has, um, she had bilateral mastectomy. So what do I mean by that? She had cancer on both breasts. She had aggressive type of cancer on both breasts. She had different stages on both breasts, but the both sta stages were treated with the same treatment, which is chemotherapy called AC and then Texotere. Okay, four cycles. Now, what happened was with this patient, then they are now planning radiation. So the challenge after is that radiation on both chest wall is going to be very complicated, very difficult, and it's going to be very hard to manage. When you give radiation on both breasts, 
the chest wall, you worried about myocardial myocarditis. This patient can present with uh, symptoms of heart failure and problems with the heart. And we also know that the lungs also can get fibrotic as well with radiation. So there may be some complications or the tumor can be re-occur after hoping that the patient will will be cured uh, or will be prevented from recurrences or a spread of cancer. So I think this patient is very lucky that her life will be saved and she has already been saved already because there was reduction of the tumor size and, from, and the stage has been reduced. So you can change the stage every time you're treating a patient. The first stage can change. So this is what happened to this patient. So we had an amazing discussion amongst one of the doctors who was there is Dr. Christopher. And Dr. Christopher is a veterinarian and he said amazing stuff. He said to us he sees more aggressive tumors in cats and cats tend to present with more triple negative breast cancer than dogs. Then I asked a question, what about cows? He said, yes, cows too do get breast cancer. How many cows do we eat that have cancer? Oh my goodness. Yes, so he takes care of animals and he was in the midst of the room. And we had Dr. Sarah Abjot, which is Sabi. I call him Dr. Sabi. Dr. Sabi was there and he spoke of immune oncology of uh, relating to breast cancer. He spoke about all the immune immunotherapy. He said because of the high level of infection of inflammation that is surrounding the, the triple negative breast cancer tends to uh, be a good site for immunotherapy. So we will discuss immunotherapy in details next time when you join us in Oncology Grand Round. We discussed a lot. We ex I, I explained what is histology. Histology is the tumor uh, when is a tissue diagnosis that interprets the tumor. If that cancer of yours gets, if the cancer of a patient get cut out or they take a biopsy, or they do the total mastectomy, they send the pieces to the lab, and the doctor called a pathologist will then look into the specimen under microscope, and then will tell us few things. The size of the tumor will tell us uh, what kind of a tumor, it, what kind of a cancerous lesion it is, and then he will also tell us and she or he will tell us if there's lymphovascular invasion, which means the tumor has it spread into the lymph nodes, has it spread into the blood system, because that's a sign that the patient deserves um, aggressive treatment because it may be spreading very soon. Those are signs. It's called lymphovascular invasion. We look also for many um, things like the receptors, which we spoke about, which is ER, PR, and HER2, that all comes out on histology. Histology is a tissue diagnosis, which is very important. And through histology, you can be able to tell a lot of things. And it's through histology that doctors decide on how to treat. It's through this histology. So your, your skin is talking, your tissue, your breast tissue talks to us. It talks to the pathologist. So from that, then the doctors will determine whether you are supposed to be treated aggressively or palliatively, depending on the histology results. Some of the patients, unfortunately, present at, up front with metastatic disease that has spread all over the body. It could be in the lungs, it could be in the liver, it could be in the bone, it could be in the brain. And when they present, there's not even time to do that histology. And sometimes it's not possible to operate on these patients. So then we work on CT scans and MRI scans 
and then the patients get treated and when it's possible to operate then you can operate and then treat again with radiation that's it, which is exactly what happened with this patient i'm just speaking from top of the of my head and because i just wanted to do this live to say i thank you i appreciate you thank you for joining oncology grand round please leave the questions we want you to leave the questions so that we can address them later this was just a summary on top at 1 a.m in new york city before I go to bed, before I just clean up myself and rest. I just wanted to do this live and say thank you for 480 members. Within one month, we have 480 members on Oncology Grand Round. Join Oncology Grand Round. Let's make a difference in patients' lives. If you're an oncologist, holla. If you're a radiobiologist, if you're a physicist, if you are any person, you could be an architecture, you're more than welcome in your oncology grand rounds. We're looking forward to having you. We're looking forward to seeing you. And most of it all, please take care of your body. Do your screening. Do checkups. Put your hand, write your hand on your breast. Put your hand on your breast and make sure you're treated by doctors who respect you. Don't allow your doctors to disrespect you because you're very special. We care about you. We want you to be happy. It's Mental Health Month. Mental Awareness, mental health awareness Month. Please be happy. Take care of yourself. And we're going to end this live and hope to see you in our rooms on Wednesday. We're going to be continuing with breast cancer. We will be talking also cervical. We did speak about cervical cancer last week. We also covered quite a few topics. We covered how, what is the stress during COVID-19 that oncologists are facing? So we're talking a lot. We are, if you are an oncologist and you wanna be part of our team of researchers, please reach out to us as well. We need you, we focus our research on geriatric. And do we, we say, should we give chemotherapy to a 75 year old patient? With good performance status, obviously, we want to know, should we treat? What do you think? My name is Dr. Tandega Mazibogo. I am so tired. So I'm going to take a rest and allow you to leave questions below. Share your story. Talk to us. Follow Oncology Grand Rounds. Be active. Contribute. Come and present your patients. We will listen, support, advise. Thank you so much. May God bless you. I wish you all the best with all your dreams, wishes, exams. Everybody was writing exams. All the best. And God bless you.